Hey guys, it's Tori from Calypso Creative Planning and for this week's video I've got a fun tutorial to show you how to use a brand new product from my shop where I've created this fun planner collage type of mock-up scene so that I've done all the work beforehand for you so literally all you have to do is add your screenshots and you are good to go you can turn this simple collage into something like this with all of your spreads this is my collage this week on my social media so in today's video we're going to take a look at how you can do this for yourself stay tuned Okay guys, I'm so excited to share this brand new mock-up with you guys. If um, if you've been following me on social media, you've seen my planner collage series. Um, and you got a little taste of that in, this, in the intro that just came. Here's some examples of some of my recent ones. And now I've got this mock-up for you guys so that you can have this same sort of look for your own social media. So let's dig into what you actually get when you purchase this from my shop. Okay guys, so the first thing we're gonna look at with this tutorial is um, what you get when you download this either from my website or my Etsy shop. So you'll get this, um, this PDF as the download and it comes with a link here to uh, to go to the OneDrive folder where you're going to find all of your Photoshop files and your image files and the templates for Canva. So my internet's a little slow right now. So, okay. So here's what you get when you click on that link, you'll get your images. Um, and with the images, you get the collage as a whole in two different sizes and you get all the individual scenes. So these are images that you can use in any software that you want. Um, if you don't want to use the Photoshop files or the Canva templates, you can use any of these um, in whatever way you want to add your screenshots. And then you'll also get the Photoshop files, which are here you'll get the collage as a whole, and then you'll also get all the individual scenes. Um, the Photoshop files comes with a smart object layer, so you literally just double click and add your screenshot and you are good to go. Um, and then the next thing you get is this PDF with your, um, your Canva templates. So that is here. Um, I think we're going to start out in Photoshop and I'm going to show you how easy it is to, uh, to edit these. Um, so when you get your Photoshop files, just download those to your computer and then we can just dive right in. So here is the Photoshop file for the whole collage. Um, I've done all the prep work for you. So, so that it's as simple as possible. You've got your background layer here that has all the decoration and all your iPads and everything like that. And then you've got your individual scenes where you can just add your screenshot. These are smart object layers. So it's really simple to double click this and then add your screenshot. Um, you can see that I've got grid lines here that I use as the reference of how this collage is divided. And when I do my social media planning, I create this collage as a whole, and then it gets divided up into these nine sections. And I use Planoly to schedule out um, all of my social media posts for the week. I take one collage and divide it up. I do a little a banner section. Um, you, you saw that in earlier in this video. Um, 
but I do a banner section to divide the different collages, but you don't have to do that. Um, but I will give you a link in the description to my planner collage series on my blog so you can see a few of these that I've done. And I'll also give you the link to that tutorial video that I did on Planoly where I created a collage, uploaded it to Planoly, and scheduled it for the week. This is a really great way using collages like this. It's a really great way to one, have a consistent look to your Instagram grid, your social media account, whatever. And it's a really simple way to batch plan your posts because you could do one post a day using these and use like just like one square. And that's nine days worth of content. And you sit down and you just plan it in, you know, one afternoon or whatever. Like I usually sit down on Sundays and like Sunday afternoon or something and I'll plan out my collage and do my sections, upload it to Planoly, and I'll write my captions like the morning of or something. But I mean, it's just one and done essentially. Um, so what I've done with this mock-up is I've given you the collage as a whole if you want to work with it as a whole. Um, because typically I'll do, let's see, um, I've got two monitors, so you're not seeing everything here. Um, I'm going to pull up another picture here to show you what I do. Okay. So this is my collage for this week where I turned, um, I turned this mock-up into a thing where I added my screenshots. I added, um, I added my social media handle, my Instagram handle, and then I separate each of my collages with a little banner section. That is three more posts. That's really simple to do. So when it goes out, it goes out in these different little grids, but then I also like to show it as a whole. Uh, people really like to see that. So I've given you the option to work with this as a whole, and you can either do this as just this one image, or you can upload your spreads and then just crop this all down into your separate images. But I've also given you the opportunity to work with individual scenes. So let's say you like this consistent look, but you don't necessarily want to do the collage. You want to do the individual scenes. I've got that set up for you. It's really easy. You don't have to post them in, in this order to create the collage. You can just mix them all up so that you still have that consistent look. Um, but I'm going to show you how simple it is to add your screenshots and you just click here on this little icon on your smart object layer and when you're editing this you obviously don't need the text that says add your screenshot here so you can either turn that off or you can just delete it I'm just going to delete it for this instance and then I've got a whole collection of screenshots of different planner spreads that I've done um, that I just keep these are the ones that haven't shared to social media yet. So I'm just going to pick one. Let's see. I'll pick this one and I'm just going to drag it in here and then you resize it as necessary. This could be, you know, you could resize it a lot if you want and just crop down part of it. Um, I'm going to do the whole thing so that it fits. And then this layer here, this is where you're going to get those little rounded edges so it clips to the screen. So you can either right click and say create clipping mask or you can hold down the alt key on your keyboard and click there. Either one works. And now you can see that it's got these little clipped edges so that it's going to look really nice with our iPad screen. So I'm going to hit save or control S. I'm trying not to use too many keyboard shortcuts if you guys don't know them, um, but I use them a lot. Okay, so see, it's right there. I don't have to do anything to it. It's just sized and in there and done. I can come in here and, you know, add text for my social media handle. And 
Let's see, I'm going to resize this. You can resize it by typing in, you know, your amount or just doing this. Let's see, I'm going to get that about there. Resize it. Whoa, not that much. Let's not go crazy. Okay, there we go. So now I've got my social media handle. It is ready to go. And that's all I did. You can add some more stuff to it, but you don't have to. And that's how easy it is to add your smart object layers. Um, and just add your screenshots and you're done. And then you just want to save as and do um, a JPEG and name it whatever you want. And now you've got this great image for social media. All you did was just drag in your, literally, I just drug in my screenshot. So super simple. Um, so you can work on the individual scenes if you want, and this works the same way. Um, when you get to the scenes where it's a vertical, it it's a little bit different. So, um, and I've got, currently I've got the selection thing. I've got an auto select. You don't have to do that um, if that throws you off because you can accidentally like move something and you don't want to do that. I'm going to undo. I don't even know where undo is. It? Control Z is undo. <laughs> um, so if you're hesitant about that, you can, you can turn that off, but that's a good way to figure out which screenshot you're working on. I've named these as if you were posting them on social media. So to try to help you out. So you would start with one down here and work your way around. So one, two, three, four, and then this middle section would be five. Um, this is so you can add like your own little note. Um, you could do an announcement about your shop. If you're doing this for your business, social media, you could do um, a quote. You could just decorate it with stickers, whatever you want to do there. And then you've got six, seven, eight, and nine. So when auto select is turned on, it's going to select each of these. Um, the reason why I numbered them in this order is because if you're sharing them to Instagram and you want this grid to show up, you're going to start in this bottom corner so that it, you know, layers on top of each other. So if you're working as this large one, um, that's, that's how you want to do that. If you're doing one of these vertical ones, it's a little bit different than the horizontal ones. I'm going to show you that. Um, if I double click on it, this may throw you off a little bit. This was just the easiest way to use that same, um, that same smart object and just rotate it. So it's going to work the same way. I'm going to delete the text one because we don't need that. And I'm going to grab my, my screenshots. Let's just take this one. I'm just going to drag it in here and I'm holding down the shift key so that I can lock this in a straight angle and I'm just going to resize this done and say, create clipping mask so that I get those little rounded edges here. And then we're going to save, close, and see now my screenshot is right there. Super easy. I mean, seriously guys, super, super easy. All you have to do is add your screenshots. And if you're using this, let's say you're doing this and it's not for planner spreads and you want to show off a uh, procreate art or something. I may have something here. I didn't, I didn't plan for that, but let's see. I may have something. Well, that's in the works. That's not completely done. Okay. Most of, most of my procreate stuff is not completely done in here. So I'm just gonna, you know, this is a procreate screenshot. It's going to work the same way. And Let's see, I'm going to resize this a little bit. And if you don't want to get rid of the text layer, you can always go under this, turn that off. And we're going to do the same thing, create clipping mask. 
and save control s if you want a shortcut and see now you've got a procreate example so you know this works for pointer spreads it works for procreate art it works for you know well anything you want to showcase on an ipad it will work here um i mean that's pretty much the gist of it in in here now let's say you're going to use this as a whole and you don't want to even worry about the individual scenes you want to do it in one place and and do that so if we're if we're doing this and you want to crop this all down all you have to do is save it as a picture and i'm just gonna i'm gonna say test because obviously this is not finished but i just want to show you guys this okay and now we've got to figure out where i just saved this <laughs> oh okay you're not seeing this but i'm on my other monitor right now let's see where did i save this Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. So I'm just dragging this image in. You want to work with the image, not the Photoshop file when you do this next part. Let's say you've thrown all your screenshots in here. You're ready to use this one image and you want, instead of using the individual scenes, the quickest way to do this. And I'm so happy I discovered this trick because back in the day when I first started doing this, I literally cropped each individual section where it's like you crop and you save and then you go back to the original and then you crop this one down and you save and no, here, no, just no, you guys. I've set these guidelines up for you so they are good to go. They're handy little references. So if we go over to our crop tool and I'm press and hold so I get slice tool and up here in the top, I'm going to do fixed aspect ratio one to one. And then I'm just going to draw a little slice. It's going to line up with the guidelines and do this for each of these sections. Once again, this is on the, your final image, not on the Photoshop file. I mean, maybe you can do it on the Photoshop file. I just always do it on the, the image afterwards because I save my slices. Um, I'm sure it works the same way. So I've got my slices all set up so it fits on my grid. You can see there's like a number for each one. Now you'll notice, this may throw you off, but don't let it, it's okay. Um, you'll notice that your slices are numbered. Let's zoom in here. Okay, so your slices are numbered. One, two, three, four, five, whatever. But you'll notice that they're numbered backwards from how I numbered my screenshots um, in the Photoshop file for you. And it's just because Photoshop is starting from the top and working its way down. But if you're planning for social media, you're working from the bottom up. So do keep that in mind. Um, but once you've got your slices, you can say export, save for web. And I'm going to give this a minute. We're going to say original fit to view. And then I'm going to select all of these and we're on JPEG and I can hit save. And this is, ignore this, save this wherever you want it to be. Um, I'm just going to hit save. You can rename it here if you want. But when you hit save, it's going to populate this for you to where, I'm going to drag this over, to where now you have all of your sections automatically cropped for you. And they're numbered. You can renumber these or you can just remember you're starting with nine and working your way to one if you do it this way. Just because that's how Photoshop um, numbers their slices. So you're actually starting down here if you're planning to go on an Instagram grid. Um, if you're planning to just use them in whatever order and who cares, then that's not going to affect you. But look how simple that is to just, you, it's cropped. It's done. It's, it's done. Oh my gosh. Time saver. I just, I'm like thinking back to the, 
back in the day when I would literally just crop each of these individual sections. Oh, oh my gosh. You, you, you just don't want to do that. That's just annoying. You do not want to do that. This is a handy way. Just, they just crop it all for you. But if you don't want to deal with the big collage, if you just want to use the big collage for that overall look and you want to add your screenshots to the individuals, I've set it up for you both ways. So you're good to go both ways. Um, okay, so I guess that's it for Photoshop. We are going to move on to my iPad. We're going to look at how you can use these same Photoshop files. I purposely didn't create separate Procreate files just because you can literally just open the Photoshop files in Procreate. So I'm going to take one of these scenes and show you how simple it is to add your screenshot into Procreate. We're going to look at that next. Okay. Yeah, next. Now we are in Procreate. And all I've done is gone up here and said import and I chose the scene I'm doing. Um, this is just where I saved this scene on my, uh, my Dropbox. So I'm just pulling straight from Dropbox and I'm just going to import this in. And as you can see, here's our scene I'm trying to give you guys different examples, different scenes that I'm doing here. Um, on our layers, you can see you've got your background and then in Photoshop, this would be the smart object layer right here. So in Procreate, you can't use smart objects, but you can still use, um, you can still use this as a clipping mask. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go up here to the gear and I'm going to say add and we're going to do, um, let's see, hopefully I have a photo on my iPad. Most of these are book covers, so that doesn't, oh, here we go. Let's go with this one. Okay, so here's a screenshot that I have done of a planner spread. And so now I've just got to get it into position. When I put it in, it automatically comes in above that layer. You can obviously move this, but you want it to be above this add planner spread layer. So when I do the selection tool, if I resize it, it's obviously not on the same angle as that. So one way you can do this is you can grab this and rotate it till it gets to, you know, about till it gets, you know, close to that angle and just kind of size it up a little bit here. And if it goes out of the screen, the iPad screen a little bit, that's fine too. But I'm just going to size this up and this one obviously is just the image. So it doesn't have the, the spot at the top as if it was like it said good notes or whatever. Um, so now I've got it about in, in place and I'm going to click on this layer and I'm going to say clipping mask and it's now clipped it to fit inside that screen. Now, once it's on clipping mask, if I wanted to come in here and like resize it, like let's say I wanted to focus on like a certain area, I can do that. Just keep in mind that if you do that, let me hit reset because I don't want to. In Procreate, if you, if your image goes outside of the boundaries of your canvas, then it's gone. So you can't get it back. It's just, it's going to cut that off. So if you resize it and you've gone too far, undo, because otherwise if you try to move it again, you're going to lose that. So you don't want to do it. Um, it doesn't work that way in Photoshop with the smart object layers um, because it's, it's a smart object. Um, in here, it's an image on a clipping mask. Um, I'm going to show you another way. So I'm going to hit undo, undo, undo. So it's back to this. Another way you can get it on your screen is that you can do the distort tool. Now keep in mind this particular one is not a full screen because it doesn't have like, it's not a screenshot. It's a, it's an image that I saved, but if it's a screenshot, it works the same way. If you use the distort tool, you can come in here and grab the edges 
and get them, you know, into position here, roundabouts. Now, if it helps, you can always turn this as a clipping mask first. So, see, clipping mask, and it fits, and it's lovely. If I do distort now, because I've changed it, it's, it's a little bit different. But you can see how you can adjust it however you want, and it, you know, it'll fit. And that's, that's lovely, right? Oh, this is a little bit, let's get that up a little bit. So that's another way that you can fit it onto your iPad, on, onto, you know, the little screen. And, oh, lovely, it's simple. You can come in here and say, add text, and, you know, type in your Instagram handle. Let's see. Get out of the way. And let's see, I'm gonna resize that. Let's rotate this to be about that same angle. And I can put that there if I want to. So, I mean, that's another way that you could do it. Um, but in Procreate, it's it works very similar to how the Photoshop file works. And it's super simple. Now you've got a, now you've got a thing. So you would do share, save it as a JPEG, and then save it on your camera roll or Dropbox or anywhere like that that you want to, you know, that you're saving your stuff to put on social media. I mean, how simple is that, you guys? I mean, super simple. Super simple. Now we've got a, a great little social media image. Love it. Okay, so next we're going to switch over to uh, Canva, and we're going to show you. It's it's a little bit different, um, just like Procreate, Procreate was a little bit different from Photoshop. Um, Canva's a little bit different. But we're going to, I've got it all set up for you. So literally just add your screenshot and you're done. Okay. Okay. We're going to switch to that now. So now we'll take a look at what you get with the Canva templates. So in the OneDrive folder that has your images and your Photoshop files, you also have this PDF with your Canva templates. I've set you up a template um, for the collage as a whole, as well as the individual scenes. Um, one of the differences between the Photoshop file and Procreate for the whole image is the size. In Photoshop, the, um, oh, I don't so I have it open. In Photoshop, the whole collage is 6,000 by 6,000. In Canva, it doesn't let you go to that size. Um, so the Canva one for the whole is 4,000 by 4,000. It's still a really good size. The individuals um, are 2,000 by 2,000. So it's going to work the same way. Um, in Canva, you can't crop down the, um, the whole image like I showed you in Photoshop. So I've given you the individual scenes. That's what we're going to look at now. So when you click this, it's going to bring up this screen that says that I have shared this template with you. And so you just say use template. If you don't have a Canva account, um, be sure to sign up. Canva is fantastic. I have the pro version. Um, there's a free version and there's a pro version. I highly recommend the pro version if you're going to use it a lot simply because you can um, set branding colors, you can have folders, you can do, you can, you get more um, templates to use, more photos, more elements, stuff like that. So you get more with the paid version. And for me, it's been well worth it because I don't even know how many folders I have saved in Canva now. It's just super handy. So when you open up this template, um, it says copy of and then the file name so you can rename this um, and it's going to save it in your designs if you have the pro version you can go to file and save to a folder 
and choose a folder that you have. See, I have all these, I mean, like lots and lots of folders. And I, pr I think I have folders within folders in Canva too. So if you have the pro version of Canva, you can save it into a folder somewhere. Otherwise, it just goes under your, um, your designs. So um, you would just rename it up there. And what I've done, this, this template has all of the individual nine scenes set up in here so that you can add your own stuff to it. Um, it's, if it starts out blurry, just give it a minute. It's just um, the internet has got to catch up to it. It's not blurry, trust me. So what I've done is I've gone through and I've set up these frames. See how when I hover over it, you get this little outline. So these are grid frames that I've set up for you. And, and you just have to add your screenshot to it. Now, here's one thing that sadly you can't do with Canva. Um, in both Procreate and Photoshop, when I showed you the screens, the, uh, the smart objects and the clipping mask, you got the little curved edges on your iPad. Um, it's not a huge deal. It's just, you can't do that in Canva. I tried several different ways to get that for you guys and you just, it just, it just won't happen. Um, so you've got the straight edges, but it's super simple to add your screenshot here. So, um, if you've never used Canva before, then I'm just going to be a basic area. So if you go to uploads, you can, oh, that's lovely. Okay. <laughs> if you go to uploads, you can upload your media there. If you have folders, um, that you're using, you can upload your, your photos to your, your folders. Let's see if I even have one that's, um, Maybe I don't. I was going to say, if I had one, there was a screenshot already there, but I guess I don't. I'm going to upload and see what I have here. All right, so this this works. This is a good example. Um, you can do, of course, let's, let's show you an example. We've showed you planner spreads. If you're not using this for planner spreads and you're using it for something else, um, we'll just do this as a random thing. Um, in Canva, you can search for photos and, and add those there. So here's how you would do it. Either you upload the photo or you're choosing a photo here or anything like that. You literally just grab your photo and drag it onto this placeholder. I'm just clicking and dragging and I let go and it's there. It's, I mean, what it's, it's there. It's, that's it. It's there. How simple is that, right? So let's say you want to tweak how it looks. If you click on it, you can, first there's effects and filters. I'm honestly not sure what, how many of these come with the free version and how many is the pro that, I mean, the free version may not have as many effects, maybe. Oh, excuse me, you guys, it's early in the morning when I'm recording this. That was a yawn. My coffee's not kicking in. Or is it? I don't know. Um... So let's say you want to tweak how this looks, if the, whether this is a planner spread that you want to zoom in on or it's a photo like this and, you know, if you click on it, you can say crop and then you can just resize it and move it around like this. So let's say you want it to look like that. Done. And there you go. That's super easy. You can come in here and add your text. Let's say you, you want your Instagram handle to show up here. So it's got some built-in combinations. Um, I don't know why my internet's going slow. Um, this, these are different ones for like branding that I have. So if I click text, well, this is going to be really small, but if I click this, and then I can say, okay, this is my little my thing. Let's resize this a bit here. And I'm just dragging because I want it to go here. Here's the rotate. And that's about right. And boom, done. Now I have an image for social media.
I mean, how simple is that? How simple is that? So let's say you're going to use this, um, this mock-up scene over and over and over again. You can always make copies of it. Um, but let's say you don't want to. Let's, maybe you're extra super, you know, lazy. I don't say lazy. Let's not say lazy. You're not lazy. You just want the easy, easy way. Okay. So once you've done this, you can say download. You can choose if you want PNG, JPEG. I mean, PNG is great. I usually do that. And you can make the size bigger or smaller here. 2000 by 2000 is what it currently is. Um, if you just want this image, see this is page two here. So I can say select and choose page two, done and download. And it'll download it right to my computer and we're done. So let's say you've done this and now, you know, a week later, you want to use this same scene, but you want to swap it out. Easy peasy. Let's grab another one. And we're just going to drag it onto there and boom. Now we've got a whole other one. And let's resize this here and done. Now it's done again. So now we can just download this version. Super easy, you guys. I mean super easy. We're going to do this one. See? Done. Crop. Going to zoom in on the dog because the dog's just super cute. Let's say, let's, let's we're going to show you something else. We're going to put this here. Done. And then maybe we want to go to elements and grab a shape. Let's grab a circle and we're going to resize this circle here and make it look like it's on the screen. Here's where we can change the color. Let's maybe make it white or maybe this little, no, not that pink. That's just blends in. Oh, black is terrible. Okay, we'll just go with this one. So now we've got this. Go back to our text. And let's see, let's get this close to the edge so that we can line it up so it's around the same thing. And let's say we're going to do sale, boom, 50% off, okay? This is totally just random. I'm literally just coming up with this as we talk. Um, so I'm going to put that there. Let's change the text color here. You know what? Let's make it look like it has a shadow. Sure. So let's duplicate it. And we're going to take this and I'm going to use my keyboard, the arrow keys. And I said shadow, but I guess we're doing more of like a highlight thing. Boom. Okay. I mean, how cool is that? This it's Canva. It's super simple. You know, maybe you want to do that same technique for that. So I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to say move backward and backward and backward and change this to be white. And then I can do the same sort of thing. I mean, it's Canva. It's super simple, super easy. The dog is just really cute. <laughs> um, but so see how handy it is if I take this guy, maybe, you know, because we, we already did this here. So maybe we want to duplicate that and then we can drag it to this one. And we're going to resize it. So, I mean, we're going to re-angle it so it's matching that and maybe stick it over here. Now let's put it down here because that just fits a little better. There we go. Boom. I mean, look at that. Now I've got a whole other thing and we just do the same thing where we choose the page we want to download. Done. Hit download. I mean, look at that. How simple is that? You're ready to go. It looks fantastic. 
So, so yeah, so see how simple and easy this is. I really hope you guys love this. I am super excited about this whole thing. I hope you guys like it. If you want more of these, um, I definitely can do more. Oh, let me show you one more thing. Let's get out of Canva and I will show you one more thing. Okay, so here's the other thing I wanted to show you. Um, you've seen this scene done in what I'm calling the teal boss babe look, but you can actually get this same layout customized for whatever look you're going for. Um, this is one of my custom scenes and this is how it starts out. Um, this particular, the teal one that I just showed you, it actually came about because a customer asked about, you know, you know, a mock-up scene and, and we discussed it and she wanted teal and have it have like a sophisticated boss type of look to it. So that's what I came up with um, based on what some of the things she was talking about. She gave me some colors she was thinking. So you can get this same layout customized for you. I'm going to have a total of, um, I've got eight different scenes to start out with. This is scene number six. Um, I'm in the process of getting the rest of them uploaded to both of my shops, my blog shop and my Etsy shop, but you can have the scene customized for you. So let's say you want it to match your branding colors or the overall look that you're going for. Um, I have a custom listing where you can choose your scene and then work with me on, you know, what all you want it to include. If you want me to go ahead and add your Instagram handle to this for you to make it even more done, I can do that. If you have certain um, digital elements that you want to include, whether it's items for your shop, maybe you have an Etsy shop too, and you're using this to show off your products. If you want to include those in the background, um, you can send me stuff to use as long as it, you know, is there's not any copyright issues or anything like that, but I do have a custom option. So use that if you want. Um, that is great. It's, it's a fun way to get it to be just, just like what you want. And like I said, I've got, let's see, I can pull this in here. I've got eight different looks that I'm starting out with. Um, not all of them are up in the shop right now, but I do have eight different looks that is my starting collection. Um, there's a mixture of all horizontal, all vertical, a mixture of, of both in a few different setups. Um, so you're going to have lots of different options to choose from, and I'm going to do more and I'm going to have some I'm going to do some more pre-made scenes. So if you want, if you don't care about having it customized, you just want a different look. Um, this is a good way to do this. And, you know, you can start out with one scene and then end up with, you know, a whole collection of them. And, and don't forget that currently I have a spend 50, save 50% discount code. If you use the code save 50. So if you want to get multiples of these, that's a good way to do that. Um, but, but yeah, so these are, these are coming. Um, I think I've got like maybe two or three of them up in the shop right now and the rest are on their way. I'm so excited about this. It's a new thing. I also have, um, an Etsy banner mock-up scene that is coming. I've got two that's currently in the shop. Um, and let's see, I'm going to pull this up so you guys can see this too. This is the Etsy banner for the Teal Boss Babe one. And I've got an Etsy banner for, um, for another one. This is called the Serious Thinker. Um, depending on when the, when you see this video, this may be my current Etsy banner. <laughs> I currently have that as my Etsy banner. Um, 
but yeah, so these things are coming. They're in the works. They're in the process. They are or already ready. So if you ever need anything custom, reach out to me. Let me know. Okay, I guess that's a wrap. This is a long video. Um, I hope I hope you guys made it through to the end. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.